The Friday Night Sports Show, and it is time for us to go to Super Netball. The expert covering it here at Flow News 24 is Carl Carrington. And g'day, Carl. How are you? Very good, Wayne. Pleasure to join you. It is. Um, it's a pleasure for me to talk netball because uh, it's been a very, very fast start to the season. The Giants have had a good one over the Magpies. And look, 66 to 54 last week at the Ken Rosewall Arena. And the Magpies are a bit of bother this year. Yeah, they definitely are. They're they're really struggling, as predicted, alongside the Thunderbirds. Uh, they're, they're probably one of the worst, mm-hmm. one of, one of the worst teams in the uh, competition, and should be sort of finishing in the bottom three, unfortunately. And what about the Fever? They've come out here and um, sixty three to the Swifts fifty five, and this is a really big win by mm. the Fever. But they started minus three games. They've already got two games yep. up. They look like they're uh, coming for the rest of the teams. They've made no um, shortage of time in really marking their authority on this competition and making up ground um, with that three-game deficit at the start of the season. So, yeah, they're, they're right ripe for uh, for top four for me, and, and they're probably the premiership favourites uh, at this early stage. Yeah, and they haven't even got um, up to zero points. So it's a big call early, but exactly. the Fowler is uh, doing a brilliant job at scoring and not fouling because uh, she scored 54 out mm. of 59 to be the sensational scorer, and on the other side, Wallace was 33 from 35, which is uh, accurate um, shooting, but in the end, it um, isn't enough to get there. And uh, we have a look now at uh, the other results uh, and there was a couple of really, really good performances um, on the weekend and uh, really playing their hearts out um, on the weekend was the uh, Vixens against the Lightning, the closest game of the weekend. Lightning 56, Vixens 51. Is there a changing of the guard? Are the Vixens now, who are premiers as we know from previous seasons, yep. are they beatable? Looks yep. like they are. Definitely they are. With, with those key retirements to those key players, um, as mentioned previously, there, there really is a changing of the guard, and, and you see the Fever ma- marking their authority. The Swifts, who the Fever beat, will also be up there. So the Vixens, yeah, are struggling, and uh, unfortunately for them, I just don't see them sort of regathering momentum for the rest of the year in order to replace those those key retirements that they've had um, in order to play finals. Yeah, and they're struggling um, that was their shooting. Uh, Kamwenda was 23 from 23, but their other two shooters in uh, Barkmire and uh, coming in uh, off of the reserve was Stanton, uh, 9 from 12 for her. And maybe that uh, is uh, the area where they're going to have to uh, see some improvement. We'll wait and see if that is the case. Um, looking at uh, our next fixture and the final fixture of uh, the round, and it was a very interesting game. The girls that you've been following around and just checking out how they are progressing other Thunderbirds, Carl, and uh, well, they're not quite there just yet. 68-57, to 57, an 11-goal win to the Firebirds. Yeah, it just goes uh, from bad to worse for the Thunderbirds, unfortunately. Their, their list isn't very strong, you know, led by uh, Woodner's own Hannah Petty. Th- there's a, a good sort of leadership group there, young leadership group developing, but there's no real... Um, standout talent, unfortunately, and in in the Super Netball, you're going to have you know performances by Fowler, etc., who are really carrying their sides to victories. And for the Thunderbirds, there just seems to be lacking that player that can really mark their authority and and carry their team to a victory. Yeah, Potke to come on and uh, 28 from 31 was the best of them. Um, outside of that, gee, they're struggling to score. Yeah, yeah, especially offensively. The, there's no real attacking talent that um, is, is standing up and, and yeah, as mm. I said, carrying their side. Yeah, Horges um, uh, in uh, not able to uh, complete uh, the game, but uh, very, very good to, to see another win for those girls from uh, over there in the Firebirds. Let's uh, have a look at our next round of matches because um, that we're going to see some pretty good games of Super Netball. And we move into round number three and uh, Carl Carrington, we've got Collingwood taking on the Thunderbirds, the two bottom sides. Mm. Who's going to win this at the John Kane Arena? Can the Thunderbirds get their first win? I think they can. I think they can. The, the Magpies, yeah, ha- haven't really been uh, as offensively um, proficient as the Thunderbirds. The Thunderbirds have still been putting up quite a good fight. They've only been losing by sort of less than 10 goals in their previous two games. So I do th- think the Thunderbirds will get their first victory for the year. And uh, I do think the West Coast Fever will also beat the Lightning um, and end up on zero points, be on on the bottom of the ladder, but three wins from three. 
Um, I do predict the Swifts to beat the Vixens in the other game. And then the Giants um, at home to the Firebirds will be a re- really interesting tussle. I, I think that could go either way, um, but I'm going to tip the Giants. Yeah, good round of matches here uh, over the next um, weekend of matches. It uh, starts, of course, with uh, the matches on Saturday afternoon and then on Saturday evening through into Sunday for Super Netball. Quick look at your fantasy side in the AFL. Now, you've been going downhill and uh, our own Jace Regan, who stepped out of the studio to give you that seat over there, he's actually looking through the glass right now and he's just uh, got himself uh, giving the big sign that uh, the thumb down, Stein, for your, your performances. Yeah, um, yeah, it is a bit of a struggle town at the moment for my side. Um, but just have a, have a look at my trades and being able to sort of regather some momentum and, and move my way up the rankings, Wayne. I'll be uh, I'll be looking at a bit of a downgrade to an upgrade. So I'll be downgrading Tyler Brockman, yeah. um, the Hawthorne player who hasn't really been getting a gig un- uh, under Alastair Clarkson of recent time. Um, he'll be going down in order to go Taylor Walker, who will be rested this week, was announced mm. by Matthew Nix. Um to the incoming Dustin Martin. So oh. a, an absolute bold magnet, scores plenty of points, and, yeah, hopefully he will this week. All right, now, here is the big one, uh, your AFL tipping. Uh, now, Hannah Bush uh, here in our office uh, does a terrific job of supporting uh, our sales team and also our um, team to put our orders into our systems mm. uh, and our accounts team too. She's an absolute gem. She's a gem when it comes to picking footy. She got seven last week. How many did you get, Carl? I got six. I got one fewer. So it's not, it's not that much of a discrepancy, yeah. but... Panic yeah. stations, though. Panic stations. I, I wouldn't say so, Wayne. <laughs> I'll be right. How many are you behind the flow, man? Uh, I think four now. Could be five by the end of the weekend or even perhaps, more. Perhaps, perhaps. We'll see how we go. I tell you, if you keep going this well, we might bring Hannah Bush in here next week <laughs> to do the Super Netball and the footy tipping competition here at the flow. Great to talk to you, though. You have a good weekend. Cheers, Wayne.